I want to talk to you about the CB2 position. And this came up on the community tab, so I'll quote that in just a second. We always see McDermott and Bean add that veteran CB2. Yes. They did not tender Levi Wallace. They let him walk, right, and come back. Yeah. They could have tendered him. would have cost him $2 million. They chose not to do that. They let him walk and then come back. Yeah. Is Levi Wallace your veteran CB2? 110%. Okay, well, that was a quick episode. <laughs> <laughs>Kevin Johnson was. Kevin Johnson was the first one. But this brings up the point to you, Paul, that you always bring up. You love this phrase. I mean, if we did a hashtag phrases, catchphrases, mm -hmm. on a t-shirt, this would be yours. Turn and burn. Yep. You love that phrase. Yep. And it's so appropriate and it fits because they turn and burn that CB2 position for years. Right. Former first round picks. Former, you know, um, former former stars. Former stars. 
That's why like Richard Norman. Sherman was available and everybody in Buffalo's like, yes. Do you want Richard Sherman? Fits the profile, right? Yeah. Fits the profile. But and, what did you just say to me, Paul? A guy who was on this team from Alabama, undrafted, probably came over because Dable says this guy loses he he, he really That's how you got Foster. Yeah, he does everything in practice, maybe. We don't know. And your second name was a seventh round pick. So you're comfortable with an undrafted free agent and a seventh round pick as your CB two. I'm just saying on the surface what it looks like. Right. No, I I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with you. I completely agree with you. Buffalo also was in the position of they had to wait for those veteran minimum deals to become a reality for players. Yeah, they did. Right. Like it's just they had to wait for them to become a reality. It was actually Pierre Martinez who asked this. Uh, and he says, I've been seeing these Dane Jackson training videos, and I don't know what to make of them. Is there any way of telling if his athletic profile is improving to a point where he can reject the notion that we need to draft a CB2? Um, the fact of the matter is, you know, Dane, Dane Jackson's a worker, so he's always going to work, right? Yeah. But what profile do you need as a CB2? Because Levi Wallace and Dane Jackson are very different. If you're going to add a veteran guy or you're even going to draft a guy, at what point do you look at Leslie Frazier and say, we need to prepare for the future? We've talked about this with the offense, right? Yep, yep. Is it the same conversation? Or is it not? Because No, it's not. You don't think it's the same conversation? I, I, because think, you're, I think I'm understanding you. Well, it's, you got, this, is, this is spiraling in because you got Edmonds coming up on a contract year, right? You just re-signed Milano. So what are you future fitting your defense for? Is, is Levi Wallace and Dane Jackson, are you going to continue to do that where you're just going to find a CB2? Or are you going to draft a guy at 30 and say, okay, we're going to get CB2 slash CB3 for the next three years. That's it. We're going to get our CB2, CB3 for the next three years. Let's just get it over with. And are you going to draft the right profile for your next <coughs> defensive coordinator? Like, well, I think this is a big question. It's a huge question, but it's not the same as the offensive question because the offense is not overseen by McDermott. Because I think... The draft profile is going to be one of Levi Wallace, not Dane Jackson. Now, what do I want them to do? Draft a CB2, kick Jackson down to the slot. I love Taron Johnson, but that to me, and then here's the deal. Then you'll have White and another first-round corner as your CB2s that could play man if you needed it. Because guess who's not going to be on this team forever? Hyde and Poyer. So that the money that's going to Hyde and Poyer now can then go to that CB2 and, and uh, Edmonds. And then just as you had a young Levi Wallace that was being shadowed by Hyde and Poyer, now you can have two stud corners that two safeties can come in. Well, I for. think that's a fair point, right? Because, yes, we just extended Hyde and Poyer, but yeah. we, we extended them to a point where we can get rid of them when it's time to give Edmonds money. Exactly. So That's, that's like, a choice you're going to have yeah. to make, and it's going to be a difficult one. So. So people are saying Eric Stokes, that's the big name because he ran like a four two five forty. Yeah, you can run fast in a straight line. That doesn't impress me very much. Yeah. But yes. it is I'm with you there. That's the same thing with a running back though, they can run like a four three. But then these pro day numbers are Bo Jackson would have ran a three nine in this, <laughs> in this game. <laughs> For my money, what I'd want to have happen is kick Dane Jackson down to the slot. He's a real physical corner. That's what you want in the slot. However, he loves those zone corners on the outside. But they can play man when you need them to. Will he do that? I don't know. But it's, it's, it's a different discussion when Leslie Frazier leaves versus with Brian Dable because McDermott will still oversee that defense. They just picked up another Carolina DN. Like, do you really think this is Frazier's defense 100% anymore? I think that's the next episode, Mark. i got to be honest with you because I watched a bunch of F.A. Odaba's tape. F.A. Odaba. F.A. Odaba. Um, and there's some fascinating traits about him that I think are misplayed by people who have who get their news solely from Twitter. Was he ever blocked by Xavier Suofilo? Oh, I'm sure. Been, that would have been I'm the most sure. epic battle ever. Stay tuned.